Hmm. Oh, I'm going to give this another... Ah, Eric turned up and just confirmed that things are okay. Alrighty. Hello, Eric. How is the audio synchronization on this one? Hey, Mr. Stamper. Ah, an Englishman in Brazil. Okay, we've got our European crowd on. Guess it is a wee tad early for the Americans to really be coming up and alive yet. Ah, this is such a pain. Let's see if we can fix this damn thing. All seems. A tarot? I'm not sure I've seen you around before, Tero. Welcome. Hey, JCT. Sync is good. Great. Thanks. All right. So as per the title of this stream, I've got... Uh, I had a machine in that I think I had it on a stream a couple of days ago. And we thought maybe the battery was playing up because it would go slow and things like that. But anyway, um, I booted up to my portable MacOS system and just ran my valley test and all that and no matter how much I pounded that valley test and how much the CPU came up the fan would not come up and so I took a closer look at this flex and as you can see there's a whopping great big crack in it now unfortunately that's pretty much what happens with all these 1502 fans because of the way that the assembly is designed it's complete and utter bollocks And so when you try to lift them off the board, they're basically just... There we go, that's better. They basically always tear along here because when you try to push this portion into the connector, it causes a pushback and that pushback focuses here. Anyway, so yeah, it's fun and games and these things are damned expensive they're around about 40 50 australian dollars sometimes to get so i'm going to scrape back and see if i can repair this thing hey dragon good to see you anton our f companion russians arrived so mostly i'm doing this because it's driven me insane in the past before Trying to think of the easiest way to get at this flex, whether to leave it as it is or. Mm, yeah, I'm not going to do much better than what I've got now. Hello, Thanksios. From Greece. Australia owes quite a bit to the Greeks. And without being too, um, what's the word, uh, hopefully not too offensive, we have excellent fish and chips, or excellent fishmongers, thanks to the Greeks. I'm allowed to say that because I have, I don't have genetic Greek heritage, but I do have family Greek heritage. I don't know exactly what my genetics are. Something Australian, I suppose, mate. Given the look, the look of my grandfather's uh, face at times, I do wonder whether there's... Yeah, I should do a heritage test one day and see what I've got. Probably nothing like what I expect.
Ah, Rodrigo, right, yes, you let me know how it goes with the um, phone software. Yes, uh, we'll have to use thin wire and stuff. This blade is actually, the angle is difficult. Let's see, I want to get a bit flatter, but my hand is a little bit fat, so I'm going to have to do an underhand scraping here. I should be thankful this isn't a touch ID sensor on an iPhone, eh? I have a couple of these and they've all suffered the same fault so that's why I'm doing this one because I'm sick of paying about 39 dollars for them okay it looks like it's just that one trace on the top side okay that's nice if that's the case Hey, Andrew Hurst. So what if it's just that one trace then that's torn? That'd be nice if that was the case. I feel like I need something underneath it. This is the sort of time where you need a big blob of blue tack or something. And naturally I do not have a big blob of blue tack in this room. Uh, for those of you in Europe, you know that as Prestic same sort of stuff. Ah, Finland. Well, thank you Timo for letting me know where you're from. Welcome. But yeah, uh, this was, I was getting up to 98, 99 centigrade on the CPU and nothing was happening and I thought alright, now I really, there really is something wrong here. Okay, so we've got those two traces. Uh, that's a tricky one. That's actually torn off, uh, fatigued off, just at the circuit board. That's a problem. So, yeah, they both have really. So I need to find out where on this board they go. Hmm. Oh, fun and games. Fun and games. Can't have everything too easy, can you now? Yeah, Dragon, I'll probably connect further up that uh, trace on the body. It's certainly worth me spending 10 minutes. Like, once I know what I'm dealing with, then I can do this more often whenever this sort of thing happens. Okay. So we've got that one there. And yeah, we'll do it up here. I don't want them right next to each other. I want them staggered. And that way there's less risk of uh, things shorting out. Right, now for wire choices. Best choice is to find my wire. Here we go again. Welcome to the daily night. The daily night? That doesn't sound right. Nope. It should be welcome to the nightly process of Paul trying to find his stuff that he's moved around in his workshop. Tonight we're looking for wire. Last seen two nights ago, fixing an iPhone 6 Plus Touch. Can he find it in under 60 seconds, folks? Or will he miss out on his opportunity? Ah, ding, 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 we found it. Ah. Hey, Mansur. And Gwilame. Hey Ed. So what I'll do is I'll attach the wires onto here and then I'm going to hook them up to the multimeter and then I'm going to probe around on the other side and find something that has a um, obviously a zero ohms and that will make it easy. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is prep those wires. 
Hmm. Just looking for something suitable to prep them on. Some sort of victim iPhone shield. Here we go. It's a little close pull. And that looks a little nasty. Stick some fresh flux on. What the fuck? That's actually quite cool, yeah. Where the F is that? <laughs> yeah, Rodrigo, I really want to get my workshop into that sort of state. But it's uh, it's going to be a bit of a long process for me to get there yet. Welcome to where the F is that? That's great, I love that. Obviously there's going to be people saying, what the heck are you bothering to repair a fan for? Just get another one. And so, well that's all nice. If you know, you've got money to burn and next day delivery, and that sort of stuff. But sometimes, sometimes there's fun in doing things this way. And this job, having a bit of fun isn't a bad idea. That's good enough. Now, for the sulky sake of the multimeter, we need to sort of strip this off a bit. You know what? I'm just going to leave that attached. <laughs> and you're all going to go, what? You're crazy, man. It's like, yeah, I am a little bit. <sighs> okay, where am I? Which ones am I going to use? This will suffice. Leaving it attached like that makes it much easier for me to just stick my little clips on there. Plug that into the ground. Exercising my right to repair. Hello, Tom George. Yes, I am indeed. Alright, let's just confirm that's attached. Yep. Now we can just flip this over and start probing around. Nice and easy. So we'd say somewhere around here it's... A little bit wonky. That's weird. Oh, no. I realize now my mistake. Anyone else know my mistake? There's no way for us to know because, <laughs> oh dear, yeah, we, um, we actually need to, yeah. But that did give us a hint. Yeah, we were dreaming of the um, impossible there. That did give us a hint, so we were pretty close just then. So maybe if I just wiggle things around, it might come good. Exactly, Travis Stamper, exactly. It has to be soldered on the other side. But when we moved it around, it did give us enough of a chance to actually detect where it is. So we'll just try that. Somewhere around here. Son of a gun. Oh, that's so frustrating. I thought I was that close. Well, so much for pretending to be smart, eh? Got called out on it. That was pretty stupid. 
Maybe if we scratch away a little bit more, we might be able to see where it goes on this side. We're basically coming from the top side rather than underneath. It's like, yeah, it's bad dentistry. Oops. So basically we're going through the flex substrate directly. Should be appearing just here somewhere. There we go. Incy Vince. There we go. That's what we were looking for. Just that little tiny nubs. And there's our second one. If we destroy this, no biggie. I've got a couple of others. I'm pretty sure I can now start to see how the second nub. Hey ZX, good to see ya. Hey J Anglions, Anglionis. Apologies if I don't get your name right. You'll have to forgive me. Some of the curse of being a simpleton Australian is that we don't get a lot of exposure to dynamic culture with multiple languages. ZX, this basically is a donor. So saying, I've got multiples of these, so whether it's this one or another one, they're all going to be donors. Come on, pumper. Ah, I hate it when the alcohol pump bottle just has a bad day. We'll just use our iPhone repair technique here. I should do the trick just nicely. Yeah. Except flux is good here, alcohol not so much. Yeah, I've kind of watched that. Alright, let's fix that up. Okay, try that again. Ideally what happens is David, that's what I want. I worked on one and the other one not so much. They'll have to do. This wasn't going to be the planned 
repair for this moment, but I guess it has turned into that. Alright, that's quite a distance. Looks like it's that went there. Okay. So... The wire closest to the exhaust goes up to that pin up here. Alright, where's the other one go? I think it should be about here. That one there. Okay, so this is the one that doesn't go to the exhaust. So this goes... to that pin there. I'm guessing these are just sensor wires. So they don't need to carry a lot of current, thankfully. Right, I need a second pair of tweezers here, thank you. Use... And we're going to get a moderate amount of flex. And we need to put a little bit of a sharp corner in it though. Ah! And hopefully we can get it stuck into... Oh my. I'm having a spot of trouble here I'm afraid my chaps. down and out of focus just how it's meant to be for some very strange reason right then I went to wipe the lead paste off the tip of that knife and I wasn't holding a piece of paper for it and for some reason my brain tried to tell me to wipe it off using my finger edge down yeah that's not a good sign Makes me wonder what's going on in that head of mine. Okay, first one done. There's probably a better way to route this, I'm just not sure yet. I guess we'll see how we go. This is all experimental. Makes it fun, I guess. And it's certainly a bit of a case of once you've done it once, or twice, you start to get the hang of it. And you can probably repair them a fair bit quicker. Ah oh, man, this 
flux tube is just too new and it's still oozing out don't worry about a soggy brain now yeah, well you know I'm not fussed about a soggy brain I was more f worried about the fact that I was going to cut myself and it wasn't even for any like cry for help or anything it was just a plain old would have been stupid type thing kind of like putting ice cream in the fridge And then later on you go, why did I do that? I do apologise that the focus is jumping around a fair bit. I know it's not a very appealing way of watching these videos. Now, we said it was the second one, didn't we? Uh, someone better confirm to me that it was the second one. brain needs a rest? It probably does. <sighs> We've had quite a bit going on, particularly with the uh, cat situation. We we found those, if you are watching the stream earlier today, we found the kittens for another female cat, obviously female, yep, and we called in the, we called the rangers to get some assistance and the trouble is they turned up and they just went in yeah I know that's shorted they just went in took the cat the, the kittens but the trouble is the mother ran off and it's like the kittens are only about a week and a half old they really need their mother and it's very annoying because you know, they didn't give us two seconds to try and help to catch the mother first. And so now we've got the mother has come back and she's naturally freaking out because she can't find her kittens. And the kittens will be suffering because they don't have their mother. I mean, they may have a person caring for them, but it doesn't change the fact that they really should have their mother. So we're quite annoyed about that. It was like... Yeah, it would have taken them a minute and a half to wait for us to come out to the door and we unfortunately do also have the problem that the male tabby stray that's hanging around he's just causing far too much strife now and unfortunately we are going to have to have him caught and he probably unfortunately will be put down he is not in great condition he's probably suffering quite a bit all right we've still got this one here to do let's just see where this one goes Oh, come on, there's no way... There's no way that didn't trigger off anything. I did have a nice iPhone 7 repair today. It was a water damage one. And I was very fortunate that it ended up been mostly just a shorted cap. You don't normally get winds like that. Alright chaps, this this has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. I wonder what's but I'm getting no hits with the continuity.
Hey Blaze, yeah, Blaze, you an Australian or are you just greeting an Australian standard g'day? Welcome, by the way. Any one possible thing I can think of is maybe that line is actually a ground that goes onto the underside of this chip. Uh, I think I'm going to have to scrape away a bit more and find out what's going on. Over the ditch. Ah, yes. Good old New Zealand, of course. Sorry, Blaze. Damn it, just ripped that wire out. Well, it obviously wasn't even very strong in the first place, so I guess we'll have to do that again. And Gecko's laughing at me. Seriously, where does this go? So you reattach to that second point again. It's okay if you get the urge to remind me that it, this is an absurd waste of time for a cheap fan and Thank you very much. Yes, Rodrigo, we'll get UV mast. Let's try this again. Maybe it goes to one of these contacts directly. Maybe it's not involved at all with the chip. I've got enough there to make the connection. Yeah, I'm starting to think maybe it goes onto one of the contacts on the connector itself. Oh, where did I put that wire? Oh, there it is. Was that a wire or is that a... Oops. Well, I was trying to solder on a minuscule cat hair by the looks of it. That's not going to work. Now this wire on the other hand will work.
Now I'm not going to solder it directly there. We're going to give it a little bit of a... I do marvel at doctors who can do this sort of stuff with nerve endings and stuff like that, so that's pretty damn crazy. We'll probably draw a schematic for this one. Uh, I don't know if we'll get a schematic, but certainly we'll draw it up and like one of the, those, um, like you see a lot of people put with the please bro type repair comment things where they have a picture of it and then they have all the little red lines and the blue lines and that's okay, good this is truly messy And that coating doesn't want to come off in a hurry. So we'll just help it a little bit. There we go. Doctors have a plethora of drugs they can take. Oh, that's quite possible. That graphics. Alright, so now I'm kind of curious on my theory that it's one of the contacts on the other side. And I just realised by cutting off that end piece there, I've kind of deprived myself the chance to accurately determine that. But what I can do is I'll flip this over and I can put the probe point on the underside here and it might give me enough contact to test it. It could be just a positive line or something like that. Alright, so we know it's floating around openly, oops, somewhere around here. Alright, no such luck yet. Seriously, you're gonna play hardball on me? Hmm. You really are. Wayne here, they're about $39 Australian. So, yeah, you really do... After you do a couple of them, you start, it starts adding up. A bit like DC inboards. I mean, sure, time constraints aside, yeah. And, like I said, I get enough of these that, for me, I do want to see if I can actually fix them. Definitely that wire is confusing me. Not to mention that it's ugly as anything. Yeah, that's a that's a real ugly fix. Real ugly fix now. It looks like I've actually torn it a bit more. Damn it, Paul. <sighs> Damn it to Hades. Oh no, I hadn't. It's just not running at the same angle as everything else. Well, well done, Paul. You just messed it up.
Yeah, still no idea what that line's for. It just bothers me. I want to have confirmation that I know where that's going. And this one needs more solder. And it's going to pop right out. Damn it. Okay, let's just drop a great big blob on it. Like that. Yeah, my two theories are it goes to a ground pad that's under the chip, but that the ground should be exposed elsewhere, so that kind of is a weak theory. The other one is that it's something that just goes straight to the connector and there's no local electronics involved. Hmm. That's ugly as anything. Ugly. Hey, Johan Roo. Okay, let's see if we can gently wash away the horrors. I said gently, pull gently. Thank you, Mendoza. It's weird that... Spare trace could be. Uh, my doubts doesn't seem very Apple like to do that. I oh know we've got a soldable. Oh, you know, I'm a complete idiot. We already know what those traces are. Oh, wait, no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I can't decide what kind of idiot I'm in right, right, right now. Um, if I look at the board view, the connector itself will tell me. But we've got another one here. Hmm. Oh wow, seriously? Wow, that's something. So this actually has solder points along there. That's impressive. This is a different fan. This is not the same one. Or is that just... Okay, I thought there were solder points going through the assembly, but they're not. They're just bond bonding points. Alright. So what else we've got? Rivets, 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 rivets. Reddit, reddit, reddit. Alright, let's just make this easy for ourselves. There we go. Uh, Deom's, well, unfortunately Australia does not have a very advanced space system. Uh, a lot of that is because Australia has an identity issue and unless we dig it out of the ground or we drink it down like a bad alcohol we generally don't think we should be doing anything else maybe it's a convict thing I don't know 
Uh, Any time there's been an opportunity for Australia to really advance itself, it almost always collectively decides to self-sabotage. Okay, this may actually not be... Yeah, this is not a genuine one. Not even close. This is a third party fan and you can sure tell. So we've got this weird rubber overfill. Okay, maybe it's a different version. Maybe this is like a 2013 or something. I don't know. Interesting that it's melting at only 250. Ow, 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 hot. Now you may think, well, this is no good, it's not the same as the one that you're trying to fix. And you would be primarily correct in some ways. Except we know that this trace does have to you know, come through. Hey, maybe it is a dead trace after all. Maybe it's a... No, but there must be multiple traces though, because... You need at least the three. And there's five lines coming in. Oh man. Where are the other two? Time for me to now genuinely check a board view. This is a 49.24. All in. Alright, so three of them under unconnected. And we simply have... Oh, we do have a fan tack. So we've still got one trace missing. Marvellous. Let's see, this might be a 5VO line. It certainly looks like it could be a ground line instead. Alright. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh wow, you really do disappear to nothing. Let's see if we can get the Myla backing off this. There are easier ways, Paul. You can just bend the damn thing backwards. Okay. This may be useful for someone else in the future. Well, certainly not connected to any of those. I can't believe it. we've got a dummy trace. <laughs> Freaking dummy trace. You're kidding me. Where are all the other traces? I suppose really though, no, actually that makes a lot of sense really. There really only needs to be two traces because going to the fan itself. Because all the PWMing and things like that will be done in here. And I'm going to guess it's a DC fan. So let's have a look. See if we have nothing. Yeah, we just got the two lines there. 
Yeah, I think we're kind of chasing a non-existent thing. Let's rip this open. No one cares about... No one cares about... Oh, great. Half the time it looks like it's got rivets. And I've just... Did I just F up my wearer driver? Thankfully not. Change camera. Well... We've got the four. There you go. There you go, you bunch of whinging poms. Ah, perfect. Now it looks like it's had a prior repair attempt. From the Dodgy Brothers. There we go. Unleash that appleness. Just clip that thing off. Probably not a good idea. I'm, like, I'm kind of ruining my good clippers here. As long as you don't ruin the tip of the clippers, you're usually okay. But when you mess up the tip, that's when you're in trouble. Oh, come on, man. Look, they've got another one. That one doesn't look rusted, at least. Sure damn felt close to it, though. Okay, we still are not in enough. Wow. This was supposed to be new shipped to me. And we can see it's got liquid damage in there. I think that's the worst part about a lot of these things you know, when you buy spare parts for the MacBooks. Is that almost always they are dodgy. Alright, so we've got a press fit unit here. So that kind of stops us a little bit. But not quite. We can still test our theory. Uh, anyone want to guess how I'm going to test this theory? Test this theory that this is strictly a two-wire DC motor, no hall sensing or anything. Ah, the wrong side of the blade, Paul. Johnny Chang, they probably are. Alrighty. Playing with fire, crikey. Nearly blew your head off. Okay, 3.9, 2 amps, that should do it. Well, it might have a feedback sense, but we'll guess we'll see. Hmm, okay, no voltage that way. I'm going to stick my finger under here and see if anything happens. It's probably not good words to use, particularly around snake country. Press fit crap. There's definitely a diode or something in this. Uh, I'm stopping it from 
go in the wrong direction, or wrong voltage. Alright, we broke that successfully. And let's have a look. Ah oh man, do we have two wires on either side? That's gonna suck. Common, okay, it's three phase, we're doomed, yep. So it's two on that side and probably two on the other side. Blast. And that's why I was getting 700, yeah. Okay, so basically these two wires are distinct from these two. It's a four wire assembly. And that's no fun at all. Ah, uh, Dragon, you know, you gotta learn to speak louder on the internet because I'm deaf. Interesting, that's actually a ball press fit. Uh, still kind of spins. Yeah. Yeah, Stockholm's is more of, let's call it uh, experimentation. And sometimes with experimentation it doesn't work. Damn it, why'd you have to be a three phase? Should have known better. Three phase brushless. God damn, explains why they've got a complicated controller there. Alright, that, I will admit, is more than I'm willing to meddle with. So, since that's more than what I'm willing to meddle with, we're going to just pile up our stuff here. Now, where's that object of desire? Uh, what can I do? Hmm, choices. Dinosaurs? Probably not. Nope. Stegosaurus says we won't do anything. We'd like to bash the hell out of these fans, but we're not. We're just going to throw them straight into the bin. And consider that a waste of everybody's time for the last hour. But hey, it was fun. Except for you guys. That was frustrating. Andrew Hughes. Yes, Express Post isn't exactly Express Post around here. Alright, so... Uh, such is life. Life sucks. But at least I know now that it's sort of folly to do that. If you're really desperate, you probably could do it. Damn it. Yeah, I was really hoping that it'd be a little bit simpler than that. But no. Okay, let's clean up. I guess part of it is because I was being, um, I was aggravated quite a bit by the fact that I bought those and at least one of them already was damaged when I bought it. And so, you know, it's like, well, yeah, sure, let me just blow my 40 bucks. Why not? Take my money. Give me junk. Thanks, mate. Anyway. Yeah, there'll be more fans later. I'm just trying to see if I've got another one that I can at least test and confirm my theory that I had with this whole system. Ooh. Hello. Who are you? Okay, I better not botch this up, because this is uh, obviously another customer's fan, and I really don't want to have to... Yeah, why couldn't they just reinforce that area or something a little more? Yeah, you can already see the fatigue building up on that one. Okay, so we've got a test fan after all that. And I do want to test my theory. Cursed little blush brushless controllers. Marvellous little things, but curse it. Send back as a warranty claim. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Ah. 
By the way, if you're wondering, these are little dinosaurs. I did these when I was about seven years old, I think. And I've managed to actually keep them all this time. So as of next year, they'll be 40 years old. And I've got myself a Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and a what doesn't truly exist anymore, a Brontosaurus. Uh, the fun things you get to do as a kid when you've got nothing else to do in your life and you're in the middle of nowhere out in the bush and you've got to do something entertaining. So you make dinosaurs out of clay and put them in a great big fiery kiln. Yes indeed, Stegosaurus. One thing you'll notice is there's no T-Rex or anything like that. I was more interested in the peculiar ones. In fairness, T-Rex didn't come along until much later along in the development cycle of dinosaurs. Anyway, with these boards, if you are doing anything with the fans, uh, you know, taking the boards in and out, then you basically need to leave the fan screwed in onto the main board. Because otherwise, they'll just end up cracking. Okay, something's caught somewhere. Is it? Hmm. Yeah, I just want to confirm that this machine will now run without it slowing down considerably because that was the real problem originally. And where you get tricked on this is that these boards inherently do not tend to run the fan until quite late. Like when they get up past 80 centigrade and whatnot. And so you have a tendency when you put them back together and you boot them up, they boot, but they don't spin, uh, spin the fan. It doesn't really make you go, oh no, there's something wrong. You just sort of think, oh yeah, it's just been the usual sort of thing. It isn't up to 80. So, uh, of course they're not going to spin, but it works. So we're all good. It's not wrong in this case anyway. 29 bucks express from Sydney Wayne. Uh, let's see. On eBay. Hmm. Now, when they say express, I've noticed lately on eBay, express does not mean express. Sometimes they use their own courier and they just say express courier service. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get it the next day. Often, what it is is they've drop shipped it from China. And then once it gets into Australia, they repackage it on their courier. And it still ends up taking six or seven weeks to get here. In the meantime, you've lost the customer. Joy. Okay, battery in. Nose itch. We know we're on our way. Okay. Let's get our MagSafe 2 reconnected. And 18 volts. Yeah, I've, I've become quite wary of any sort of claims on eBay of fast or courier or anything like that, because it almost is a lie these days, always. Let's see, option. Pretty sure that's my option key. Yep. I'm too blind to be able to see the option key if it legitimately is that. Uh, Baltic Electronics you mean for the cameras? It's all USB funnily enough. There's no HDMI capture on this at this point. I'm not rich enough to get an HDMI capture card. Yeah, the screen's a little bit uh, not so great. God damn. 
I don't know why, but it takes a very long time for it to scan these external drives. Even though there's only one partition on it, basically. There we go. Uh, Steve K, the iPhone 10. Is that the one where I replied, send it down to Bill of A1 Mobiles, I think? Pretty sure it was. Yeah, Baltic, if you get the right... <coughs> pardon me. If you get the right cameras to start with, then you can do it all through USB. It's not as good as HDMI capture directly, but it'll get you through. Um, the camera I use is in my list of my repair items. The camera is not cheap. It's um, about three, four hundred dollars, I think, these days. But yeah, if you if you get my repair items list, uh, let's see, I'll bring it up. <sighs> if you go into that list, you'll see the camera and the adapter. Someone tried to clean it with pumice. That's pretty much a, a pretty good description. Yes. For the face cam and the desk cam, I just use, uh, let's see, I'm not sure which is which, but one of them's a Logitech 922, the other one's a Logitech 920. The only reason why I've got different ones is so that there's no clash, ID clash issues when uh, Linux tries to assign the driver names. Hey, oh, hello, Jessa. Welcome. Mark thinks I have a sexy voice. Um, tell Mark I am very flattered, but he's going to have to find himself someone else. Let's see. By the way, Jessa, did you see that we now have a limited number of phone boards for Flexboard View, if you have the latest Flexboard View? And I had a really easy iPhone 7 today. I don't normally do data recoveries anymore on iPhones. I send them off to someone down in uh, Melbourne because you know, he's just really good at it. And I trust him a lot more than I trust myself. But yeah, I had a nice um, shorted, exploded cap today. And I thought, oh, that was a good one. Very lucky. All right, let's run Valley and see if this comes up. And I still haven't even started on the MacBook that I'm meant to do tonight. So run. And hopefully we will get a fan spin. Tim, you talking to me? Oh, sounds like the start of the valley to me. Ten frames per second, that's woeful. Alright, something is definitely not 100% here, but then again, it might be my settings, because when I was trying to push it over the limit... No, it is on medium. And it's not even... No, something's gone amiss. Maybe I've actually found the fault finally. Because this most certainly should be going a lot faster than that for this machine. We should be getting 30 to 40 easily frames per second. This isn't even trying. Uh, Tim, no, there's no capture card that I've got. They're all just USB cameras, like the Logitech C922, the C920, and then the microscope camera, like I said, it's listed up on my site. Alright, 
So we got something else, maybe after all this it's finally actually decided to reveal that it's having issues. And that's a little discerning. Or is that disconcerting? Didn't we discuss this the other night? Because it's certainly running slow. No, I have run Valley on these before. This is worse than a... This is worse than a... Um, A1369. An A1466 will run this at 20 frames per second, no problems. No anti-aliasing... But it's interesting that it was behaving before and now it's not. Hmm. What is interesting also before is that it thought the fan was spinning, whereas now it most certainly thinks the fan is not spinning. But then again, that's... Uh, well, this has turned into a bit of a disappointment. Let's try to run that again, see how bad it is. Hey Joshua, uh, maybe um, I haven't been able to sleep much lately. All the swamp monsters are keeping me up. Yeah, something's really not going right here. Crap. Intermittent fault. Just the sort we love. Microscope camera looks like it's not available at the moment. Oh. Um, in that case, if it's not available, then check with Lewis Rossman, because he's going to—he's offering cameras and adapters. Yeah, something's definitely not right there. All right, I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to order replacement fans and see what's going on. What I might do actually first is disconnect the battery. Sometimes the batteries on these can cause them to slow down. Hey Southern Wonder, I know it's not a software glitch because I ran this only a couple of hours ago and it was just perfectly fine when I was trying to get it to burn the fan up and it didn't. So we'll disconnect this battery. Okay, that's good. Could be a bad trackpad. It'd be a laugh if it's that. Suck if it's that too, because... Nah. Connectors seem okay. It does happen at times. Kind of curious as to why it's crimped out like that. I don't think it should have quite that much fold in it. DCM board has been replaced, so it's not that. I'll just take this solid state drive out. Let me try that one more time. Because the cursor jerks are not running valley. Uh, nope, it uh, seems to be perfectly smooth. It's currently quad to one here in Queensland. One. I was going to say, I was waiting for my bong then. Maybe I've got a dud SMC on this, who knows. Easy to blame the SMC for everything, a bit like blaming TriStar for everything in iPhones. Well, Wayne, I would have blamed the temperature throttling, except, and that's why I was looking at the fan in the first place. 
except that we've now installed a fan that should work and it's still not doing it so unless I've got my years wrong but I don't know if the Dead CPU. I don't remember you. We came together so far and didn't make it. <sighs> HN. Okay, I don't even know what it's doing right now. Uh, what was interesting before is it actually was showing it was running at a speed. It, the controller on that broken fan was telling me that it was spinning and I could visually see it was not because it yeah, had those broken um, connectors, uh, broken traces whereas this one is not saying it's spinning and it's also not spinning so I'm a little unsure yeah no we've definitely got something else going on here now it's taken way too long to boot Alright, give me a tick. Get ourselves a genuine replacement 2015 battery. See what happens. These damn things are stupidly expensive. Okay, camera's good. Seems to be booting at a more normal pace right now. Drawing three and a half amp. Yeah, battery packs are uh, no fun in taking these ones out either. Still sluggish on the boot, but I do wonder whether it's this SSD that's the problem. Should have hoped to get an Apple logo by now, though. Come on, Apple logo. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, for the last two weeks, I have not been able to get this thing to fault. And now that I've put it on stream, it faults. It is trying to read the drive, but whatever's going on is it it's running extremely slow. What if the heat pipe's dead? No, it's okay. Yeah, it's twenty fifteen screen. Yeah, Paul, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong. Okay, it is responding correctly to... Okay, hold down our option, bring it back up. Giffany, I completely agree. The screen is just a real trigger. Johnny Chang, I'm not sure, I don't imagine they do, certainly not to any notable degree. I'm thinking I'm definitely just going to have to shut this one down, get on with the other job that I was supposed to be doing. Okay, so we've got that. Boot now. Do I have a wish list? I wish for a home. 
Uh, oh, you mean a realistic wish list? Yeah. Have we got fan spin now? Okay, so we know that fan definitely works. Tim, I think the problem I have right now is that I'm coming out of a protracted period of unsecured debt and I finally managed to pay off the sort of the notable worst of it as it were and so at this stage it's a case of well I just need to get my finances rolling back up because unfortunately with the business structure that I have which is a st uh, sole trader here in Australia well that's what we call it I'm not sure what they call it elsewhere but um, even if you've got a reasonable deposit for a house, say 20%, the banks simply do not want to deal with you. they like, hell no, it's one of those people that work for themselves, run for your life. And unfortunately it's been further compounded now by the Australian Royal Banking Commission, which has effectively made the banks just shut their doors. So... Yeah, this is running much faster now. So I think we're... Yeah, here we go. See, it's doing 23 frames per second. I knew it could do it. Okay, so maybe this does just need... A replacement battery and a replacement fan. Hey Chen, I think it's I think it's a battery giving it grief. I'll have to do further testing. But you know, like I said, it's doing twenty frames per second plus, so whoops. Sorry, bring that back there. Hey Andy Dandy. And now it's up to thirty five, which is normal for this scene. Okay, so we're going to quit. Everything feels proper now. I guess one way we can test that is to shut it down and then while no one else is watching I'll try it again. But I'll um, you know, work on this other machine for Tim, I'm hoping so with Flex... I mean, look, to be honest, Flex Board View has actually already helped greatly in terms of finances. I mean, it's what pretty much got me to the point where I can now. I'm at the tail end of those debts. Because um, that was about a year and a half ago now. And it certainly has made a significant difference to the point where now I've got to actually start thinking about income tax a lot more and how not to get stung by it so much. Uh, my income tax bills sort of hurt this year. So there you go, there's a wish list. Pay off my income tax. <laughs> it's only about 15,000 Australian. Okay, so that's good. Alright, since we've pretty much wasted the entire night, first thing I better do... Boot now, you bastard. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, what I need to do first is check with my boss. You all okay up there? And if my boss is all okay, then I can look at this next machine a bit more. Well, I'll look at it anyway. Ooh, someone got serious about packing this one. Ooh, it's a 15 inch. Uh, unfortunately, they put the power brick up against the back of the screen. No. Sincerely hoping they have not damaged that. No, this is a 1398, I think, by the feel of it. Yep, 1398. All right. It's a big beast. I'm not getting an answer from the boss. That's sort of frightening. Uh, 
All right, 1398. Let's have a look. Let's see if we get any boot response. We've got a green light. We're drawing power. One point two, one point five, so it's charging. Let's see if it powers up. We've got a bong. We've got an Apple logo. Oh, don't be one of these. Four amps. She's already passed out, quite possibly, yes. Become an influencer, then you can magic away your debts. Yeah, that's quite true. Um, Alright. This thing's up and running. Now oh, that concerns me. Which means I now have to go to... Go and search what the fault was originally. Okay. Fault on the logic board causing to reboot after about two to five minutes of operation. File. Oh, okay. Started after there was a bad power brick with a frayed cable causing a short and then ever since then it just re randomly reboots under windows or linux the computer runs okay Ooh, that's going to make it fun problem persists even with a new mac os install oh crikey uh, yuck all right so basically it's an intermittent fault that seems to happen within the Mac OS itself after it got a, some sort of short circuit on the DC input. Uh, this is, I'm not sure exactly which year this one is yet. I have to pop it open and see what, it's, what it is. Obviously the date of purchase does not betray the date of manufacture. Yes, Aaron, I agree. It's that's why I'm definitely pulling the paces because it's like you know, it's like when you get these ones, it's either going to be something profoundly simple and you laugh at it and go, ha ha, you know, nice one, or it's going to be a rabbit hole to hell. It could be the way the memory is being driven. It could, yeah, it's, it could be a particular section of maybe the graphics chip. It's just, yeah, I don't know. And maybe if we're lucky, it's actually a um, U8900. They'd be quite surprised if it was that, but I guess we'll see when we open it up, shall we? Let us hope it's U8900. Alright, we've got some bugs. Oh, I like bugs because it means something has misbehaved. We've got some nice little dust bunnies in there. Growing all healthily. Battery pack seems okay. Alright. Let's disconnect that battery pack before we do anything dumb. Uh, I really hate these daughterboard cable crossover things, these ones in particular, because they've got a little wire a little wire latch on them and if you don't get the wire latch you just do a great deal of damage to things hey crazy j hey kilo nl you recently ordered yourself a microscope can't wait till it arrives oh shipping to south off uh, are you in south australia are you but, uh, shipping to Australia does take a very long time. I spent 
a considerable amount of money on shipping to get mine here and it still didn't get here very quickly. 256, Samsung, I have to tell them to get themselves a replacement drive soon if they want to actually not lose their data. If you are working on these and you have a customer and they've got a Samsung SSD in there, do advise them that they really should consider changing to some other brand. Yes, you're right, the eBay site is cheaper, quite a bit cheaper. And I can tell you, it pretty much is the same speed, so yeah, go the eBay route. There's a moderate number of dust bunnies here, but nothing yet that's actually detrimental to the environment. Oh, I really hope it's not the VRMs. No, I thought someone was tapping on my door then. Kind of spooky at this hour of the night when someone starts tapping on your door. Twenty-eight three six six. What? No, I'm reading up some. Eight two zero three six six two. Uh, I don't believe I've worked on one of those before. Right, let's get this thing out of here. Have a look at the other side of the board. Speaking of slow deliveries, uh, you may remember I got the supply company to send me a replacement one of these PA to the 00 Phillips Vero drivers because the one that I ordered that they said they'd shipped got lost in a bit of a delivery black hole. Anyway, today, four weeks after I ordered it, it finally turns up. But they said to me if they said if it does turn up eventually, it's yours to keep, so Congratulations, you basically just got yourself your rear drivers at half price. Okay, now these fans you can get out without ripping them to shreds. They get a little bit stuck under here sometimes, though, but that is fine. Yeah, look, cute little dust bunnies. It was nice to get a small win like a half price wear driver. Alright, and the nightmarish Wi Fi connector. And if that's not bad enough, then you've got the extra nightmarish camera connector under this that you've got to get out. To be fair, it's not the Wi-Fi connections um, the, on the adapter that are the problem. It's the damn cables. Okay. Whew, survive that. Look, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure it's this model that has the hellish cables that just fall apart when you look at them. But just take it under general advice that uh, with all of these Wi-Fi cables, be a little bit careful with them. Oh, 
What else have I got? Got all three of them out? Yep, all three. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Damn it, you're stuck. You lousy little... You lousy little thing. It's not stuck a lot, it's just a bit of a little sort of old adhesive or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, it does hold them to the main board a bit. Yep, yeah, gonna have to take the Wi Fi card out. What more? <sighs> Too big. Too big to fit in there. There we go. Jeez, that took its time. Where's Lee? The heat sink and fan screwed on when removing the 1398 boards. That's funny, I, I take the 1398 ones out, but the 1502 ones I leave connected in. It's funny how uh, you have your different preferences. Mostly because, as we just saw before, the 1502s have got those notoriously fragile fan flexes. Whereas I find at least with these ones, they do come out. Although they're not that dissimilar. Okay, we've got a bit of junk under the flex there, I just noticed. Hello. Hello. Oh, what are you? Geez, you would not have noticed that. Okay. Let's have a look. So what was this? Uh, 3662. I don't know how Tim Herman does it, but if any of you have watched his videos, when he zooms and pans around on the board, it's very fluid. It's I don't know how he manages it. Whereas when I do it, it tends to be quite stuttery. And he's got the same setup as what I do, pretty much anyway. And yet he manages to be a master of its controls. Okay, all in. Let's turn that around and let's see. Pretty sure that was the connector route after, wasn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, and we've got. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are semi merged together, and of course, naturally, it's backwards. Blimey, one, two, three, four, five, eight, and nine. Come on, Paul, use your math. It's just this. Uh, these are just data lines of the keyboard matrix, so, yeah. All that will tend to do is give you bad key presses. You never know, maybe it's one that, you see, your on-off is this one down here. So, yeah, it's, it's obviously we're going to have to clean that up, but I'm not going to say that that's the cause. Shame about that. Still, that's a very strange place for a bit of corrosion to be. Very strange. You would not typically anticipate that. Under the connector and everything. Then again, bugs certainly get around.
Andrew, you're quite right. Well, actually, that's pretty much a definite. You will definitely do more work on intermittent faults. Particularly because you spend a lot of time afterwards trying to confirm that you legitimately have resolved the fault. You know, there's all that uncertainty to deal with. Is my Nope, she's given up on me. Get out of here. Thank you. Okay. You gotta be so careful pulling these out. Just the very edge of a connector can be caught on to like the lip there. And that's enough to hold it back. And then you go reefing it too hard and you... In this case it was this little chap here at the back. I disconnected it but as it came up it just latched back on slightly. Well, with the camera skills thing, like I said, if you, if you have a look at Tim's videos, like his more recent ones, you'll see what I mean. It just feels very fluent. Fluid, rather, not fluent. <laughs> Clearly I am not fluent with the English language. If the only thing we can find on this board is that keyboard connector corrosion, then um, I guess we'll have to go with it, but... It would feel like something's going to still come out of the woodwork ten minutes after I send it back. And like I said, I'm sort of fearing it's the VRMs. Okay, no, there we go. That's more like what I'm looking for. Bit of corrosion there. Again, though, that's not... Yeah, maybe that is enough to... Because what would that be? That's probably a ground, maybe? I said, again, it's not great, but it's certainly no killer. So we'll keep looking. Keep hoping. So if there's two instances of bug-like crap that we've got, then yeah, there might be another one somewhere. And whatever it is, is going to be subtle. Maybe. It's probably this huge chunk of green goo somewhere. Could end up being something that ultrasonic fixes. Okay, let's get this brush. Brush away the dust, but not the corrosion. Alright, nothing there. I'm going to have to peel off this protective strip. I'm unsure still what to think about the whole fact that it works fine in Windows and Linux but not in Mac OS. It's hard to say whether that is a just um, impressively coincidental thing or whether there really is a key issue there.
It could be something to do with maybe current load. Was there corrosion on the hall sensor? Not that I could see. There was the dust, of course, but uh, I didn't see any corrosion on the hall sensor. And I mean, that could be something, you know, maybe MacOS is doing a sleep or something, but uh, it didn't look like it. It's got a corrosion on that. But again, not really a Yeah, this is going to be a frustrating one. I'm leaving that there just for the moment. Maybe there's a combo that, that it's generating, which shuts the Mac down, but I doubt that. Uh, the three caps that had some crap on it, that's there on the back here. That's them there. So now we've actually removed the protective strip, although it didn't actually remove it, it just yeah, left the adhesive behind. Yeah, this is going to be fun. It could also be the DC, um, the daughter board. So we might have a look at that. Because like I said, I'm really not, really not feeling like I found a smoking gun. And he said, yeah, sure, there was a bit of corrosion there, but really that's all just, that's all just itself there. No. It did eat it a little bit, that is interesting. But I certainly wouldn't consider that to be genuinely at fault. Uh, Travis, actually that's not a stupid question, that's a really important question. Because you're right, the distance is quite crucial. It's something you have to work out for yourself. But, uh, let's see, I've got my tape measure. <coughs> let's see, the top of the wood bench portion is at 760 milliliters, uh, milliliters? 760 millimeters from the floor. Uh, well, that's pretty much all you need. Yeah. But it would be nice if it was fully adjustable. And I guess that's why fully adjustable desks are becoming quite popular. Because some days you want a little higher, some days you want a little lower. I feel like I could do with it being higher yet again. Mostly because I get a bit of a crick neck doing this. Good reason for me to not do it all day, every day. There's really not much to these... DC inboards anymore. Yeah, let's have a look at the daughter board. There's a few places that have them now, thankfully. No, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah. Yeah, I'd take that off.
Yeah, having an adjustable chair is also the other. So you got the adjustable desk height, you got the adjustable chair height, and then you spend many weeks tweaking it. And just when you get it right, you have to change something. Yes, um, that's right, the height of the Barlow, the Barlow lens changes thing. I'll use a 0.7 here for this. If you use a 0.5, you'll need a giraffe neck. If you use no Barlow, then uh, it should be okay. No, this one, this one's going to be a nightmare. This one's going to be a case of, well, let's swap out this and run it for a couple of days and see if it misbehaves. Yeah, I'm not really oozing with a lot of confidence on this. Wow, oh, what a waste of a night. So you've seen me not fix a fan, you've seen me not fix a A1502, and now you're seeing me not fix an A9... Uh, 1398 Thank goodness I had the 1466 earlier today At least I've sort of put some brownie points in for my skills I sure need it now Ah, uh, Kenny Dorman, it's the 2015 one It's a non-fixed Wednesday show. Well, it certainly is now, isn't it? Given that it has turned into Wednesday. Oh, well. Yes, yeah, some learning experiences. Some experiences you don't really care to learn. I guess you don't really get a choice, do you? It's like, well, this is what you're going to learn today. Alrighty. Uh, I guess I'll clean up that keyboard... Uh, corrosion and we'll go at it tomorrow yeah uh, right now I think I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to just become due to the lack of uh, brilliant success this evening my brain is now going into dejected mode which means I probably should go downstairs and have myself a uh, tub of ice cream or two I'll uh, Set me up nicely, maybe watch another episode of season 14 of Supernatural. It's uh, yeah, it's okay this season, but it's sort of feeling a little bit like they're dragging it out. The randomness is what makes it great to watch. Hmm, yeah, well, I suppose so. Uh, I'm glad you guys can handle that. It drives me up the wall. A lot of ice cream, yes. A lot of ice cream makes Paul happy. Let's see... Tony W, do you know what the boot device might be for the instances of Windows, Linux, Mac OS? Could that point to the SSD versus USB data power? Tony, you make a good point there. It could actually be the SSD. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, what I will do, and because it, it is a Samsung after all, I will take this SSD down into the other office and I'll make a clone of it and through that process hopefully maybe something will be revealed let's have a look at it anyway just in case maybe there's something floating around but unfortunately with the problem with these drivers is that it's almost always the controller that dies misbehaves It does look a little funky down there, but I think it was just a poor underfill reflow uh, flow in. Yeah, 
Okay, so I actually don't know whether the person reinstalled or installed Linux or anything like that on here. So you may actually have a valid and important point there. Yeah, how big is this one? 256, right? Yep, I'll just plug that into the archive server and pull the data off it, just as a safety precaution. Alright. Let's see. So, if time to head off to sleep. Well, we'll take this down. How did that happen? I thought I... Oh, that was weird. Yeah, we'll take this downstairs, get the data off it, which would be a good thing to do anyway. Mind you, I guess it's already been reinstalled, but uh, we'll check. Greg, you're right. Uh, Samsung on the PC, SSDs, things like that, is very highly regarded. In fact, I use them all the time. But uh, the problem is with this particular um, SSD controller that they use for the higher performance drives on these uh, 1502, 1466 type, 1398 drives, the um, 12 plus 16 SSD is that they're all just starting to drop dead now. Uh, I think in the last week I've had three or four of them dropping dead. So I don't know what the deal is, but it's kind of like the Apple NVIDIA graphics card, uh, ATI, AMD graphics card failures. So it seems like now Samsung's having its time with these drives. You can at least buy replacement, drop-in replacement drives for these Macs. Uh, they still cost quite a bit, but... Um, at least they are available. Uh, Transcend makes them now. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm going to head off to sleep. How long has this been running for? Nearly two hours. So yeah, a little bit, um, a little bit pushing it considering the time of the night. But thank you all for watching. I appreciate that. And um, thank you for giving me the suggestions here and there, which uh, helped me maybe find a solution to all these problems. So you'll take care. Once again, thank you. I'll see you later.